yourself, free your mind of all the stuff that tends to fill it, and let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship with the One Voice Children's Choir. Please rise as you are able and join the call to worship uh, followed by the gathering hymn. Can one be homesick for something you've never known? We are homesick for this world, for these light rivers, for the end of suffering. Yes, we are homesick. For joy that is contagious, for nations that feel like neighbors. We are homesick for the world God promises. We are homesick when we are on our way. God is here. God is still creating. Let us worship the Holy God.
hope for a world where all are fed. We hope for a world with more bridges and walls. We hope for a world with wide open doors. We hope for a world with contagious laughter. We hope for a world where trees grow tall and creeks run clean. We hope for a world where all people feel at home in their bodies, in the church, in their physical homes. We hope for that world. We long for that world. We are homesick for that world. So today we light the candle of hope because hope keeps our hearts alive as we wait. May this light be a reminder that the wait is always worth it. We are close to home. May we carry hope with us. Amen. Amen. Now is the time in our service where we share our tithes and our offerings.
Amen. Well, believe it or not, you have made it to another Advent. And this one, thankfully, looks a little different than the last one. And even the one before that. So there is hope. There is a lot of hope just because of the difference in this Advent than the past couple of years. But what is Advent? Advent is a time of waiting. It's a time every year on the church calendar before Christmas where the church is reminded that hope is coming on Christmas Day. We're just in a waiting period here in Advent. And so over the next few weeks before Christmas Eve, which, by the way, Don and I are planning a Christmas Eve service, um, so I hope that you will make your plans to join us um, for that. Uh, we have, um, I guess, musician lined up already, and it will be a candlelight service um, as we've done in the past, so keep that in mind. But in the Sundays before then, we're doing a series, an Advent series this year called Close to Home. And today, we're going to be talking about this idea of being homesick. Have you ever been homesick in your life? Raise your hand if you've ever experienced that. It's not a fun feeling. I think I've only been homesick once in my life, and it was the first time I moved away from home to go away to college. And I went to undergraduate seminary, and it was only an hour and a half away, but it might as well have been a thousand miles away. Because I was no longer at home, I was no longer on the farm, and I was scared. And I find myself sitting on the front porch with my mom. My dad had died a few months before. And so for the first time in my mom's life, she finds herself in an empty house all by herself. And I'm trying my best not to get emotional as we're sitting out there talking before I get in the car to make the very long hour and a half drive on a Sunday evening, knowing that I was going to be back home on Friday because I came home every weekend. I try not to get emotional, and my mom looks at me and she says, 19 years ago, I carried you into this house in my arms. And I start getting that warm feeling and tears puddling up in my eyes. And she just looks at me very seriously and she says, but you are way too heavy for me to carry you. <laughs> You're going to have to walk out of here on your own. And that was our goodbye. And then on Wednesday, I get a letter from her. I only haven't been gone three days. I get a letter from her and she says, I hope you're enjoying your new home. And that's when the tears started flowing. I was homesick. And even though I came home every weekend, usually with a car load or two car loads full of classmates for the weekend, I was still homesick. But homesick is something that's very hard to describe to someone. I found a poem written by Reverend Sarah Speed, and she says this, how do you describe homesickness to a child? You don't, they know. Children know the feeling of being away from home. It's fear dipped in loneliness, the what if I've been forgotten sonnet, or the what if I can't go back and frame. Even a healthy, scrubbed, clean, shower with love child knows the longing of home. But if I had to, if I had to describe that aching feeling, I would say homesickness is when longing and grief wrap themselves around you like a blanket. It's the door to comfort thrown open. It's an eye on the horizon for what could be and the only way out is to keep walking, to keep dreaming, to keep looking for signs that will point you back home. And if you tell that to a child, you just may realize that a part of your spirit has shoes on and has always been walking, always been dreaming, always been looking for the home that could be. The door to comfort has been blown open. 
tell God, I'm homesick. I'm on my way. Our text today is a rather odd text, I think, for the first Sunday of Advent. But it's Luke chapter 21, verses 25 through 36. And there will be signs and sun and moon and stars and on the earth the stress of nations and perplexity because of the roaring of the sea and the waves. People fainting with fear and with foreboding of what is coming on the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, straighten up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. And he said to them in a parable, Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they come out and leaf, you see, you see for yourselves and know that the summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all this has taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But watch yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and cares of this life. And that day come upon you suddenly like a trap. We will come upon all who dwell on the face of the whole earth. But stay awake at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that are going to take place and to stand before the Son of Man. I ask you to join me in prayer. Holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Man. There is something that you have probably heard before if you've been here or in any UCC church or any other churches for that matter, and it's called the Common Lectionary. And in that Common Lectionary, it lists the passages of scriptures that are to be preached about that day. So churches all over the place today are preaching from this very text. I don't always use the lectionary, but as I said for Advent, I was going to, and then the first text is a little apocalypse. Thanks, God. <laughs> Here we are, talking about hope in the season of Advent, and we're talking about signs and the moon and the stars and all of these things and calamity coming over the earth after we just lit the candle. That doesn't sound very hopeful to me, but there is hope. In the text, it says, keep watch, keep awake. Brighter days are coming. Hope is coming. So what is this passage saying to us today? When I read that passage of scripture, as bad as it sounds, in a lot of ways, it mirrors the last couple of years that we have been through. We've been through a lot through this pandemic. Most everything that we do or have done in life looks different now than it did then. Going to the doctor looks different. Being in the hospital looks different. Worship looks different. Everything is different because of this pandemic that we've been through. And I've never experienced anything like it in my life. And I pray that I never have to do it again. But there have been so many people who have lost loved ones during this pandemic. And they are facing their own little apocalypse, like we read about in Luke. Many people got sick and weren't able to go to work, which meant that they didn't have income coming in. For a short period of time, 
there was a moratorium on evictions because the government said, look, we know people are struggling, so we'll place a moratorium on evictions. And that helped for a little while. But the longer that people are out of work, the more income they lose. And people are facing evictions now. People are losing their homes, their cars. They no longer have transportation to get to work, which puts a burden on them. Many parents had to stop working, or at least one parent had to stop working if they're a two-parent home because children were homeschooled for such a period of time. And so that was a loss of income and an extra financial burden on families because of that. And the list could go on and on and on. But we hear Jesus saying, stay awake, keep watch, Hope is coming. We're not going to be in this little apocalypse for a very long period of time or forever. Keep watch. Hope is coming. But isn't it hard to see that hope when you're in the midst of something? When you're in the midst of a dark time, it's very hard to see hope on the horizon. Sometimes, it's impossible to see hope on the horizon. And it takes a lot for us to realize that hope is coming. We will eventually get through whatever it is we're going through. So Jesus is reminding the people in the gospel reading for today that hope is coming. But I think Jesus is reminding us today too, hope is coming. Hold on, stay awake, because hope is coming. Now in this passage, this little apocalypse, the people were waiting, and they said, None, these things would not, this earth would not pass away until these things came into existence, or came into being. And he tells them to stay awake, and so they're waiting. And now we find ourselves in Advent and we're waiting. We're waiting for the coming of Jesus. We're waiting for Christmas. We're waiting for the birth of the Savior. We're waiting for the birth of the person that's going to show us a better way of living and a better way of ministering to each other. So we're waiting. But while we're waiting for the hope to come, that should not prevent us from being the hope for someone else. This past Thursday, when I was going back and forth taking food out to the parking lot, there was someone that came in, and Dennis, by the way, if you ever need a greeter, get Dennis. Everybody that pulled into this parking lot, Dennis talked to. He was wonderful at our check-in table. And there was a, a woman and a teenage son who came in, they saw it on Facebook, and they came in, they didn't register, and so Dennis asked me if we had a meal for them, and I said, sure, we'll get them a meal. And so I brought one of the public's meals out, and the mother said, oh, I can't take that. We don't have anywhere to cook it. And I said, oh, it's already cooked. You just have to warm it up. And she said, we don't have any way to keep it cool. She said, we're living in our car. So we gave him some hot meals. I still can't stop thinking about this mother and teenage son. But just for a little while, we were hope for them. Those trees in the lobby are filled with tags. And for each tag that you take and each gift you bring back, you're being hope for a child that may otherwise have nothing at Christmas. If you get one of the tags from the Food for Thought or the Food Pantry, you're being hope for someone who otherwise wouldn't have food in their pantry at home or a child who would go all day at school 
with no snack. And who can learn when they're hungry? That is a way for you to be whole. You can be hope to your neighbor just by checking on them and making sure that they're doing okay. You can be hope for somebody in the grocery store by doing some kind of simple, random act of kindness. Maybe if they can't reach something on the shelf and you reach up and you get it for them or something like that. Just something simple. There are millions of ways for us to be the hope for people who so desperately need it. So the challenge in our own version of a little apocalypse and in your own version of a little apocalypse, while we're waiting on hope to come on Christmas, let's be about the business of being hope in a world that so desperately needs it. May it be so. Amen. I invite you now from the comfort of your seats, because you stood up already, to join me in our, in our sermon hymn, Come Now Long Expected Jesus. If you can't see the words, and they are going to be hard to see on the screens, it's on the back page, back of the sheet that you got when you came in.
who is in constant pain, Rita with cancer, Bill with cancer. Please pray for my friends, Ed Bautista, who had a stroke, Mike Wood, who had a heart attack, Paul Bemise, who passed away, and Bill Burrick Ulrich with cancer. Pray for the Soaps family, Bernadette and Joseph. Pray for Marge and Ed Skibos and Larry Spalding Jr. who has COVID. Knowing that there are some joys and concerns that are just too personal to say out loud or to write on the card, I ask that you join me in a time of silent prayer, lifting up your own joys and concerns and knowing that our all-sufficient God hears those just as well as if we speak them out loud. Scripture tells us that where two or more are gathered, that you are there. So we trust that you are here, listening to these words, drawing us close and stirring hope awake in us. And for that, we are grateful. We are so grateful. Today, Holy God, we feel close to home, close to when the candles are lit. We feel close to home when we enter the space and someone knows our name. We feel close to home when we find moments of true connection. And we feel close to home when we are brave enough to be who you call us to be. But God, even with gratitude for our close to home moments, we also recognize that buried deep within us, we have homesick hearts. God, we are homesick for a world we have not seen. We are homesick for a world where oceans are clean, trees are green, animals are not endangered. We are homesick for a life when days feel expansive and a Sabbath feels possible. We are homesick for days where mental health is not stigmatized, time is not a commodity, and self-worth it's not scarcity. God, you've been described as the God who never leaves us alone. So we are carrying both hope and homesickness all at the same time. Hold these two sides of the same coin tenderly and fan the flame of both. For we realize that hope is a gift and homesick is a reminder. For each conviction, we give you thanks. We ask that you help us during this Advent season while we're waiting on hope that we will also be the hope to those around us. Now with the confidence of children, we pray together the prayer that Jesus, our brother, taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, if you will stand, because you're going to make up for sitting. And for our sending hymn, let there be peace on earth.
As you leave this service, your service begins. Comfort the homesick, open your doors to others, seek sanctuary. Be brave enough to go home by another way. And remember that here in God's house, all are welcome. So come back soon. In the name of our foundation, God, Spirit, and Son, go in peace. Amen. Our postlude today um, is meant for you to sing along with if you want to, but it's also to serve as a reminder of what we're doing afterwards to motivate you to stick around and hang the greens. Yeah.